Hello, I'm back. And I wanted to take a look at this four-page PDF that I stumbled upon a few days ago from the United Nations website. The title of the document is, What is Sexual Harassment? The first part of it is pretty much transcribed from the EEOC's website and comes from their definition of what sexual harassment is. You know, after taking a look at this document, most of the examples that they give on this, this document are pretty much common sense. But I think it is still a helpful resource for people who aren't sure about what, what actually constitutes sexual harassment. After years of working in corporate America, I can say that I've experienced almost every example on this list. There's a few that are um, probably gray area. At the part where it says giving of personal gifts, the first time that I read that, I was like, since when is giving personal gifts sexual harassment? But then the more that I thought about it, I can remember back several years ago when I used to work for this company, there was a female co-worker who kept receiving flower roses and greeting cards in her personal mailbox and she was receiving these gifts anonymously so it got to the extent that she felt uncomfortable and creeped out by it so she went to the management and complained also to HR about it and there was a big meeting about it and so the HR representative advised us in the meeting that whoever it is that is sending these gifts needs to stop and if they're interested in asking her out on a date or being friends with her, they, they need to make themselves known and talk to her about it. So I do understand how someone can be made to feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable by receiving personal gifts, especially from someone who they don't particularly like. And another thing about that is that a lot of times when people are giving you gifts, they're using it the gift giving as a tool to manipulate or to hold over your head so that they can ask you for a favor later on or to make the receiver of the gift feel somehow obligated to give in to certain requests. The part about, um, let's see, I'm taking a look at the document right now. The part about sexual comments turning work discussions into sexual topics sexual innu innuendos or stories, asking about sexual fantasies, preferences, or history, personal questions about social or sexual life. I've experienced a lot of that, especially when it comes to group settings or, um, say, uh, situations where you may be working in as part of a group. It's, I can see where it's easy to be sucked into those types of discussions. So... I would caution <laughs> people about, I would caution people to avoid certain types of discussions, especially when it comes to people who you work with that concerns sex, politics, and other controversial topics. Because it's very easy to get sucked into it, and once you get sucked into it, it's hard, it's hard to get out of those discussions. The part about touching the person's clothing, hair, and body, I also experienced that. There was this one occasion where a male co-worker was standing near me and talking to me and, and I had just gotten my hair done and he was staring up at my hair. And I could tell that he wanted to touch my hair because he all of a sudden lifted his arm up in his hand and began to motion as if he was about to touch my hair. And I screamed out, out loud, don't touch my hair. And you should have seen the shock in his eyes. Like he didn't expect for me to react that way. Man, one thing you don't want to do is touch a black woman's hair. A lot of black women are offended by people touching their hair without permission. I kind of feel like I have to preface or qualify what I'm about to say because... I don't want any um, super social justice heroes and warriors to stop by this video and leave any dumb or willfully obtuse comments. So 
I'm going to say it has been my experience that some and not all white women seem to be seem to have this strange fascination with black women's hair, especially when some of us style our hair in braids with extensions or weaves and sometimes even wigs. On several occasions, I've had white women to, to, you know, when I've had my hair in these nice styles, to come up to me in, in awe and say stuff like, oh, your hair looks so cute, and all of a sudden they'll take it upon themselves to touch my hair without permission and look at my braids as if they're inspecting my braids and almost kind of like they're appraising fine artwork at a museum or you know uh, observing artwork on display somewhere and it's just I don't understand how they could do something like that to a perfect stranger how would they feel if me as a black woman approached them and started picking through their hair and uh, inspecting their hair as if I'm not used to seeing a white person's hair it's almost like they feel like they have some sort of right to touch a person's hair without permission but you know I find it to be very rude and if I knew them very well and I was close to them, then it wouldn't be an issue. But we're talking about perfect strangers or co-workers doing this. You know, it's, it's inappropriate even for a co-worker to do it unless you have a, a close relationship with that person. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Not everybody necessarily feels the same way as I do about that. And anyone who knows me can tell you that I'm a very peculiar and particular person when it comes to certain things, especially touching because I'm very squeamish when it comes to germs. I know that people's hands carry microorganisms which can transmit infectious bacteria. I just feel very uncomfortable with total strangers putting their hands on me and sometimes even kids because I know kids put their hands in places that aren't particularly clean. <laughs> And there's no telling where some of these people's hands have been, you know. They could have been picking their nose or digging up in their booty just before deciding to put their hands on someone. So I don't like when people do touch me without permission, especially when I don't know them. Then I'm also concerned about someone's energy. I don't want nobody transferring their negative energy onto me by touching me. It sounds kind of superstitious. But that's how I am. I don't know where some of you all who are watching this video may live. I live in the United States. And um, from all my years of working in corporate America in this country, it has led me to the conclusion that most of, quote, sexual harassment, unquote, is really unintentional and probably due to cultural misunderstandings. Because, you see, you got to realize that, like they say, America is a melting pot. There are people over here from all over the world coming from different walks of life and backgrounds. So their views and perceptions are not going to be the same as a person living in the United States. Their consciousness and ideals are not going to be the same as a person coming from the United States. Where you may view someone touching you on the shoulder or giving you a hug as sexual harassment, they may view it as being friendly. You know, you have to take all of that into consideration. Now, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then this is what it comes down to. You have to open up your mouth and say something about it. This is also where your interpersonal communication skills, tact, diplomacy, and assertiveness skills come into play. They're not going to know that what they're doing is offensive to you unless you open up your mouth and say something about it. Otherwise, the, the behavior is going to continue until it, be, it escalates and you become angry and you blow up on them. And you don't want that, especially in a workplace setting. You got to, you know, muster up the courage if you're a person that has a problem with assertiveness and approach whoever it is that is bothering you pull them to the side and say, hey, what you're doing is unacceptable. It also comes down to setting some boundaries and letting them know, hey, you know, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm not going to tolerate it. It's unacceptable and it has to stop. Now, after you've advised them that what they're doing is unacceptable 
if the behavior continues, then I would say you have all right to file a, a formal complaint against them for sexual harassment because obviously they are not respecting your personal boundaries and your rights. That's all I have to say for this video. I'm out.